Hey, what's up? Thank you for watching this video. It's Tony here, and this is a pretty cool project that I actually completed one of these for my father-in-law in Japan a few years back, and I always wanted to make um, a, a video for my members on this, and I actually just went gung-ho and I made four different projects on these tanks here. So, uh, a backstory on this is um, I you know thought it would be cool to create like a lamp out of these motorcycle tanks so I picked this one up off of eBay uh, for about a uh, 80 bucks or something got it to my house around a hundred bucks or so um, and it had a damage on the left side here you can see the crease it was um, it was in a accident the fork hit it and dented the front of the tank and I was thinking of repainting the whole thing you can kind of see it uh, here that the right side on the video but the left side on the tank I'm bending uh, this part straight now I'm just trying to fix it but I was thinking of completely painting it a different color and like body working it and bondoing that spot um, but I I later said to myself I want to keep it original so I ended up not even body fillering, you know, putting body, body filler on that section because if I did it would it expand into the pinstripe decal section of the tank on the side there and I wouldn't be able to preserve it. And I really don't want to mess with it. And I know if I do body work on this dent here, okay, this dent here which when the handlebars turned it made a dent in the gas tank here um, there is a little bit of cracking here which we can feather out okay but um, if I pulled this out and did body filler bondo and then feathered it and primed it it's definitely gonna get over here this is like less than an inch this is like three quarters of an inch away from the body over here you know, it's going to be very tough to blend it right in here. Um, you know, because when you sand it, you got to feather in and it's going to be extremely tough to do that. Oh, man. So what I'm thinking of doing is just sanding this out and not doing body filler, just getting it smooth and then laying the candy on basically sil masking the old graphic up, right? I'm gonna follow this and mask it, tape, tape the center part up, spray the outside candy, silver first, candy it, and then take this off and clear the whole thing. That's what I'm thinking of doing so I can preserve this interior part. There are a couple of little mini rock chips that you can see in here. What I'm thinking of doing with that is maybe adding a little, with a paintbrush, adding a little black base coat on these little spots here um, to, to hide them and then clear it. But I, I really want to keep this internal Harley design here, you know? <clears throat> and then what we could do is put a blue candy or a green candy with this black. I think it'll look really good. You know, imagine the rest of the tank like a blue or blue or purple or whatever. It's going to match because this is black. Um, so that's what I'm thinking for this specific uh, tank. You know, we could go ahead and do everything, but I'm, I'm, I'm just afraid that if I start it, because I really do want to take out the dent, but I'm, I'm feeling that if I do start it, it's just going to get into this the side here and I'm gonna pretty much mess it up and we're not gonna be able to salvage this this beautiful design on the side so I don't know it's kind of like a part restoration I would say but without taking this dent out you know and changing the middle to candy and keeping the old design on the side it's gonna be a lamp it's gonna be a, a, a piece to put on your mantle at home or wherever you want to put it and I don't think it's gonna be much of a big deal because we could display it on one side versus the other. All right, so I sanded this section down. I think I used like a, a 320 here just to feather it. 
Um, I didn't have to do this because 2K filler primer would have sealed some of the cracks or whatever I wanted to fill. After looking at this video, I'm like, why did I even do this step? Um, it didn't look that bad. But I ended up mixing a little bit of glaze putty. Oh, I think it was because I was doing other projects at the same time, right? I was actually making four tank projects at the same time, you know, doing the body filler and doing all these, all these parts. So that's why I made so much extra of this glaze because I was glazing the other tanks. That's why. Um, anyway, and I figured, hey, let me just add some in this in this uh, section here. You'll see it come up in just a few seconds um, right over here. So it really didn't need anything, but I just put a, a little bit of glaze there just because, and then I feathered it out. So here what we're doing is I found a thick body washer from one of my uh, classic car Chevelles that I that was actually this great diameter perfect diameter to put over this gas tank hole here the gas cap hole and weld it on this way we could put our mounting stud for our lamp right so basically I'm just grinding this down here uh, and then we're gonna basically pretty much weld that washer on it and bolt our uh, our lamp stud so we can screw our lamp on it. You'll see what I mean in just a bit. I put a hanger through the tank here coming out of the bottom fuel hole. Okay. So what we're going to do is basically pinch this on. Okay, it's just pinched on so we could pull it through. And maybe I'll kind of go like this so it's easier. Okay, so we're gonna pull the cord through. Top of our gas tank here. Okay, done. So here are all the pieces that I got with it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our, our washer. Maybe even we'll put a lock washer. Well, we only need a washer, lock nut, and our bolt. Okay, so we'll just tighten this up really well. And then we can fish this through and weld it and then finish this off and screw our top on right after we connect it and pull it through. So let me just get a wrench quick. Okay, we will hold this side. Let's make sure it screws back in. Okay, it does screw back in. Now it'll give us a chance to make it tighter. Okay. Now that this is tight, okay, we can weld it on with our cord through and we won't have to worry about it later. We can weld this on connect it and then pull it through and then tighten. It's basically how it's gonna work. Okay, so I think for now I'll just tie a knot in here just in case. 
Okay. Um, we could weld, do what we got to do, connect that later, put this through, and we're good. All right, so I'm going to tell you right now, I am the industry's worst welder. So what we're going to be doing is just a few tacks here and there um, just to get it to sit, and then we're going to finish it with body filler. Okay, so that's a tack. So after you weld, you want to grind down the welds, and that's what I'm doing here. Kind of just feathering it out because sometimes the metal pokes out and all that. So we're just grinding down the welds, and then we're going to mix up some body filler lightly and just go around it and seal it up very nice uh, to you know give us that smooth finish that we're looking for. And if you're a total newbie and you're watching this video as the first video, you know, when you, when you join VIP, um, I would recommend watching the other car, the step-by-step -step projects and cars because I get very much in detail. This is like just adding extra content for you guys. So if you want to learn like even more in-depth, like what kind of body filler I'm using, how much hardener to put in it, you know, and all the little details, then I would really recommend watching uh, a step-by-step -step video uh, in the course. You know, start off with the A to Z. Um, start off with the manual. You know, go through the course uh, because the, the more advanced stuff comes through here and I kind of don't explain every little detail because I figure you pretty, pretty much know everything by now, right? So uh, after laying that, we let it harden and um, we're basically... Uh, using a DA here and sanding with 150 grit just getting it smooth and we might put another coat of filler on it to smooth it out even more uh, to get it nice and uniform it's not a lot of body work right it just literally took maybe I mean not even an hour to get this part done Alright, so as you see, it's looking pretty smooth. Some metal spots protruding through, protruding through, and uh, I decided to just go a little bit wider uh, with the filler here to, to, instead of having like a Mount Fuji type of, you know, rise, I made it a little wider so it just kind of like gradually comes up to the top of the, the washer there. And then actually ended up coming out really nice. So we actually block sanded this flat first kind of going in circles, you'll see that in a bit, and then I just finished off by hand. Now all the scratches that you see um, that is basically going to be filled. See that whole top area is all scratched up, right? That's going to be filled up with our 2K primer. I think I'm actually even using an 80 grit right now. That's an 80 grit color paper. Uh, the top I'm just hitting down with 320 grit right now. Sorry about the lighting here. Um, and we're going to get everything ready for primer. Now, prior to doing any of this body work, remember, I washed the whole tank down with 800 grit. So if we get any overspray on it, any other area it'll easily blend or sand right into it okay as a as a feather feather sanding so i'm using a primer here called spray max they come in aerosol cans it's a 2k so that red 
thing that the plug that I put in the bottom actually activates the internal hardener. It pops it and then you just shake it up and uh, and spray it. It's pretty good stuff. Um, it also has a little adjustment that red valve at the top that little knob it actually adjusts from narrow or wider fan patterns so i think i just made it a little wider here and um it's good for a few hours after you pop it and i noticed that you could even put it in the refrigerator it'll last a good day to two days uh, and still work so i'm just going to give this thing a couple heavy coats you know the first coat i usually go light um, i actually did other tanks in the process here I'm just coming back for like a second coat here, I believe it was. And we just filled it really well because the primer is basically going to fill up all the sand scratches and imperfections and everything in between. Um, and then we wash sand it with uh, 600 grit I think I used. You could use 4 or 600 grit. I used 600 because um, I didn't want to cut through on the pinstripe section because this is a, you know, it's more of a... A restoration it's not a complete job so I didn't want to cut into that pinstripe there when feathering my primer into the black you get what I'm saying so watch the next video and you're gonna see exactly how it's done thanks